Hey guys, it's Chef Tom here. Today we're gonna to talk about kitchen measurements and accuracy when measuring food. So there's three different types of measurements that you need to concern yourself with. One is weight, another is volume, and another one is counts. Understanding measurements will help you with portion control, food cost, accuracy and recipe production. And if used right, it can just make your life easier in general. Generally speaking, weights are gonna be more accurate than volume measures. You could have two people measuring out brown sugar in a cup, and if you've ever measured out brown sugar before, you know that you can pack it in there pretty tight or it can be loose. So if you have two people measuring brown sugar, uh, you could have two different outcomes. But if you're using weight, that outcome is gonna be precise every time. You can't really fool the scale, no matter how much you pack it in. Weight is weight, and it's very final. These are all volume measures over here. They use different types of measuring vessels. Uh, you fill the vessel, and that determines how much volume is in it. Now, weights, on the other hand, are always associated with using a scale. Uh, you can't really know the weight unless you use a scale. Um, and then you have counts. Counts are measured by the each, like you have one apple or you have two onions or you have a dozen eggs. Now there's a whole thing with fluid ounces and weight ounces. I made a video about that. Check it out, it'll be in the corner here. So you need to understand that fluid ounces and weight ounces are two separate things and they uh, do not match. For instance, this cup here says ounces on it, but what it really means is fluid ounces, and that can be very deceptive. Uh, same thing with this ladle here. It says two ounces, but what it really means is two fluid ounces. These dishers here also have the same thing. They say ounces on them. What they really mean is fluid ounces. Uh, so fluid ounces are a volume measure, and ounces, regular ounces, are a weight measure. Ounces by weight are always done by a scale, and fluid ounces are always by volume. Another thing with the fluid ounce versus weight ounce thing is you have the ounce and pounds uh, standard that you see in America, but then the international community, you have milliliters and liters or grams and kilograms. Uh, that kind of just um, makes that whole problem disappear because I mean, grams are always associated with weight and liters are always associated with volume. And then you don't have the problem of the whole fluid ounce versus ounce. Not understanding the difference between fluid ounces and weight ounces can result in disaster if you don't understand. Uh, so I do recommend checking out my video on the topic. So you have nested measuring cups. They're uh, these guys right here. They're used for dry ingredients. Um, when using one, you will want to scoop your item. Like let's just use sugar, for example. You'll want to scoop it so it's keeping full and then you want to level it off. And that's how you will accurately use this type of measuring cup. Uh, they're usually, they come in sizes uh, typically of one cup, half cup, third cup, quarter cup. Another handy little thing here is this two ounce portion cup. It's a little disposable cup. You'll see these in restaurants. When in a bind, I'll use one of these. The two ounce variants are always a quarter cup. So next you have a graduated measuring cup. It's one of these guys. You have a half cup, one cup, two cups, two and a half cups, three cups, four cups, which totals to be one quart. Um, these are for, more for liquids. I mean, you could use dry items in here too. When using these graduated measuring cups, you will want to have it on a flat level surface, steady surface. And then when you're reading it, you want to get down to eye level, just again, accurate reading. If you're looking at it from the top down, you might not be reading it correctly. They can come in cups, pints, quarts, gallons, uh, different sizes. A disposable variant of that are these quart containers, which are great for prep in a restaurant. If you work in restaurants, so you've probably seen these before. This is actually the same as this. Uh, it holds four cups. There's no measuring lines on there, so I mean, you would have to eyeball it, but I use these all the time also. If I don't have uh, one of these cups available and I have one of these cups available, they can be used the same way. So next we have measuring spoons. You have teaspoons and you have tablespoons, usually broken down into quarters and halves and whatnot. Three teaspoons will equal one tablespoon. Uh, when using these, you'll want to scoop the item until it's full and then level it off, either with a knife or your finger or something. Uh, you just want it to be level. Uh, you don't want to pack anything in unless the recipe specifically asks for you to pack it in. 
Then you have ladles. These are typically used for liquid style items or more wet items. This is a two fluid ounce. It comes in variants like anywhere from one ounce to eight ounces. To be accurate with measuring something in any of these, you want it to be like level. Uh, you don't want them to be heaping. So next we have these, um, these are called dishers, oftentimes called scoops. They come in different sizes and colors. Now the colors are very specific to the sizes that they are. So you could be like, hey, I need a purple scoop and that purple scoop will always be the same size. It's a standardized coloring system that they have. I'll throw a chart up here in the corner showing what the different colors are and how much they hold. There's a naming convention associated with them as well. This is a number 12 scoop here. What that means is 12 of these scoops will fill one quart. This purple handled scoop is a number 40 disher and 40 of these will fill one of these quarts. When using these, like everything else I've described, you'll want it to be leveled off if you want it to be the accurate amount of what the scoop represents. Now, there are instances where you don't need it to be leveled off. Like, like a restaurant I worked at, we were scooping hush puppies and we would have it be a rounded scoop or a heaping scoop. As long as that's what your intention is, that's fine. If you want it to be the exact amount that the scoop is, you're gonna have to have it leveled off. So if you've ever worked in a professional kitchen, you've probably seen these guys. This is a four inch hotel pan, which has also been referred to as a 400 pan. The 200 pan is a two inch version of the hotel pan. And then you have the 400 pan, which is a four inch version. And then you have a 600 pan, which is the six inch version. Uh, those numbers came about from just item numbers that they used to use back in the day. I'm not sure if they still use that, but that's where that naming convention came from. Some people use the 200 pan um, terminology, but at the end of the day, they're hotel pans. The, the two inch version is actually two and a half inches, but everybody just refers to it as a two inch. I'm gonna throw a chart up here in the corner that shows how much they each hold. I don't ever really remember how much they hold. I kinda have to look it up every time. Oftentimes in a professional setting, you'll be like, you'll be talking about making something and you'll be like, yeah, we're gonna need like two or three hotel pans or I'll need one 400 pan worth of like mashed potatoes or something. When I was working in hotels, we would have a, a two inch hotel pan full of mashed potatoes would feed 50 people mashed potatoes. It's a form of volume measure. It's not an exact form of volume measure, but it's a form of volume measure that people quite often will use in a professional kitchen. So you have things like half pans and third pans and uh, six pans. The naming convention with those is, this is a half pan right here. It's half the size of a hotel pan. Or this is a third pan here, and you can fit three of them in a hotel pan. Uh, this is a six inch version of a third pan. This is a two inch version, of, but they're both third pans. This is a six pan here. You can fit six of them in here. The only one I don't have here as an example is a nine pan. It's the one that's smaller than this. If you've worked in a kitchen, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, it's the one that's smaller than this. You can fit nine of those in a hotel pan. Like this is a plastic six pan right here. Uh, these are all metal pans, which are they're completely heat resistant, obviously because they're metal. These are also heat resistant up to a certain amount, uh, which is stated on the bottom here. This one can go up to 210 degrees Fahrenheit before it starts to melt. But I mean, you can use these in the refrigeration units as well. They're all standardized because they need to fit into like steam tables or the top of like your cooling equipment. So when dealing with volume, all of these measurements are related to each other in a very specific way. And I'll put a chart up in the corner showing those representations. Three teaspoons equals one tablespoon. Two tablespoons equals one fluid ounce. Two fluid ounces equals one quarter cup. 16 tablespoons equals one cup. Four cups equals one quart. Four quarts equals one gallon. Knowing the relationship between how these interact with each other can save you a lot of trouble and it can make your life a lot easier. For instance, there's 768 teaspoons in one gallon. Using 768 teaspoons is a lot more tedious than just filling up a gallon. So knowing like the relationships between how these all interact with each other will save you a lot of time and will make your life a lot easier. You also have milliliters and liters, which is the international version of volume measures as represented on this side of the cup. A thousand milliliters will equal one liter. It's a lot easier to understand. I'm not sure why we didn't pick that up in the United States, but um, it is what it is. But I mean, you may see milliliters or liters in recipes that you're using. There are conversions for that as well. 33.8 fluid ounces is one liter, which is very close to a quart actually. A quart is 32 fluid ounces. So um, you could almost 
will say one quart is equal to one liter, very close, but not quite. Uh, so now let's talk about weights. Weights are weights. You have 16 ounces in a pound, uh, 2000 pounds is a ton, but you probably won't be dealing with tons when you're talking about food. You also have milligrams, grams, and kilograms. Very easy to remember. 1000 milligrams is a gram, 1000 grams is a kilogram. One ounce equals 28.35 grams. I learned that in high school. If you know what I'm talking about, give me a shout out in the comments. If you're using a container to hold the item, you'll wanna put that empty container on the scale and then zero it out and then fill the container with the item. Likewise with the digital scale, put the empty container on here, hit the tear button, zero it out. I mean, you have digital scales and you have spring-loaded scales. You also have balance beam scales. These are pretty accurate. They can measure in grams and ounces and pounds. Um, these, this one here is specifically a pound scale. They come in ounces also. Uh, one thing, and I see this all the time in kitchens, people pick up these scales by the measuring platform. Uh, don't do that. These are spring-loaded. If you lift the scale by here, you're stretching the spring out. Uh, which will make it not work as accurately. Uh, always pick it up by the base. So then you also have counts, obviously. So you have like one onion or two pineapples or you have half of a watermelon. You can have a dozen eggs. I mean, recipes will ask for items like that. And that's pretty self-explanatory. So there's all kinds of different abbreviations. I'll throw the different abbreviations up here in the corner. Of the different ways that you might see these measurements represented in a recipe with like tablespoons and teaspoons actually, like you have teaspoon is represented as like a TSP or a little t, whereas tablespoon is a TBSP and a big T. You have cups could be represented by a C or quarts is represented by a QT. So I wish it was just that cut and dry where you have your volumes and you have your weights and they kind of stay in their own separate worlds, but that's not the case actually. Um, an example with that is I have some peanut butter here and I have some ketchup here. The peanut butter says it's 40 ounces, which is also two pounds, eight ounces, which is also 1.13 kilograms. It's all a weight measure. Now, I don't know about you, but I've never weighed, I've never measured peanut butter by weight. I've never used a scale to measure peanut butter. I'll either use like a tablespoon or uh, one of these cups or, or like a measuring cup or something like that. Same with this ketchup here. It's 38 ounces, which is also two pounds, six ounces, which is also 1.07 kilograms. Likewise, I've never used the scale to measure ketchup. The reason that they do this is for their benefit. It's easier to measure something by weight than it is by volume. Like you can look at this and be like, I don't know how much volume that is just by looking at it, but you can put it on a scale and be like, okay, that's how much it weighs. It's easier to measure things in bulk on a scale. Um, so that's probably why they do this, but nobody's measuring out their peanut butter or their ketchup or the various hundreds of other items that are bought by weight, but used in volume uh, when you're actually using it. If we're gonna measure ketchup, it's either gonna be in a measuring spoon or a measuring cup. Also on the peanut butter here, I mean, so the serving size is in volume measures. You have you have two tablespoons is a volume measure, right? Which is also 35 servings. If you're trying to figure out how many servings you're gonna get out of this, thankfully this one tells you, it says 35 servings per container and those serving sizes are two tablespoons, which is two tablespoons is a volume measure. It's not a weight measure. It's like comparing apples to oranges. So how do you figure that out? How do you figure out if it didn't tell you on here how many servings there were and what the serving size was, how would you figure out how many servings you could get out of this by yourself? So you're asking yourself, hey Tom, what are we gonna do? That's where something like the Book of Yields will help you out. Peanut butter here, you have ounces per cup, 8.47 ounces per cup. You can get 1.9 cups per pound. You can get 16.9 ounces per pint, 0.9 pints per pound, 1.06 pounds per pint. And those are all weights converted to volume measures, which is invaluable. The only other way you could figure that out is to put it in here and then measure it. So uh, it saves you a lot of time by using something like the Book of Yields. So let's use the Book of Yields just to see how accurate this uh, 35 servings per container is. So it says here that there's 1.9 cups 
peanut butter per pound. And we have two pounds, eight ounces here. Two pounds, eight ounces is actually 2.5 pounds just because there's, there's 16 ounces in a pound. So eight ounces is half of that represented as 2.5. So 1.9 times 2.5 equals 4.75 cups. So there's 4.75 cups of peanut butter here. You times that by 16, there's 16 tablespoons per cup you have 76 tablespoons. Since the serving size on here is two tablespoons per serving, that equals 38 portions, which is very close to the 35 portions that this says. Your portion size might be different than two tablespoons. Say it's three tablespoons, then you divide 76 by three, and that'll give you the number you need. So that's how you can figure out uh, converting volume to weight or vice versa. It's a pain in the ass, but as you can tell, it could be a necessity for you. Well, there you have it. That's, uh, that's kitchen measurements and how to measure accurately. I hope you found this video interesting. And if you did, please give it a like and subscribe.